Hello everyone, my name is Patrick, Music Allies COO. Today, I'm going to talk to you about two of the key international streaming services, specifically how to optimize an artist's profile and analyze performance. Now, the first thing we need to look at when approaching a platform are which parts of a platform can be controlled. What we mean by this is what can you update on the artist profile itself, as well as things like playlists. Then, how can we better market our artists using the tools provided by these four artist tools? Next up, we need to identify the opportunities that allow us to do things like pitch music, produce content, as well as optimize our overall profile. And we'll also have a look at the analytics that are available in these two key international streaming platforms. First up, let's look at Spotify for Artists. Now, Spotify for Artists, a quick run through, is available to be accessed via your distributor. There is a high level of customization available for artist profiles. You also have the ability to do things like sell merch and tickets. There's also a wealth of educational content. And there are, though relatively limited, analytics available within Spotify for Artists. And last but not least, you can access Spotify for Artists from desktop and via a dedicated mobile app. Now, this is what Spotify Artists looks like when you land on the home page. It stands out from other artist platforms in that it's more than just a profile customization tool or an analytics tool. Spotify are trying to create a community for artists and they do that through providing users with lots of different tools, resources, and even events. Here you can see the artist profile. This is the central hub for your music on Spotify. It's where all of your releases will be and where fans will be able to find out where you're playing next, as well as buy merch. An important feature that Spotify for Artists lets you change is that of your profile photo and header image, so that you can keep this in line with your current brand. You also have the ability to add additional gallery images so that your profile contains more imagery to showcase your overall artist brand. Additionally, you can also add your bio to your profile. Having a biography is very important as it lets you further your brand. It can be up to 1,500 characters long, and it's worth noting you can also tag other artists, playlists, and releases within your Spotify bio to give it context and connection to the wider platform. There are also five key social links that can be added to profiles so fans can connect with you elsewhere. These are Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Wikipedia, and Soundbetter. Next up is the Artist Pick, which is a feature that allows you to pick a specific track, album, playlist, tour, or podcast together with an image and a short message and feature it on your profile. This helps you pin something specific to the top of your page so that it has increased visibility for two weeks until the pick expires. Now, we recommend keeping the Artist Pick up to date, which means checking back every two weeks during a release campaign, for instance, to make sure it's the latest release or when you're between releases, you can experiment with things like discography or favorite playlists. And of course, when you have tour dates, they should be front and center. Speaking of playlists, in Spotify for Artists, you have the ability to feature playlists on your profile. There are many different types of playlists you can create. Of course, there's the standard reverse discography playlist containing all of your releases track by track, starting from most recent all the way back to your first release. But We've seen artists do more interesting things to actually customize their playlists and create more storytelling around their brand. For example, we have Charlie XCX. Now, Charlie's playlist is normally around 20 tracks, and she often crowdsources tracks from her fans on Instagram. Sometimes there's a theme, like in this screenshot, but the playlist has also moonlighted as a playlist promoting her latest album. Dancing in the Kitchen, on the other hand, is PVA's Tastemaker playlist centered around the theme of cooking and dancing at home during the COVID pandemic. Arlo's Tunes is Arlo Park's playlist that contains all of her favorite songs. So as you can see, you've got lots of options and you should use them. There's also a concerts tab on the artist profile as well. You can connect your profile with things like Ticketmaster, Songkick, or Eventbrite to make sure that all of your live dates, including virtual ones, are promoted together with your music. It's also possible within Spotify to promote your merch to your Spotify audience. This is done via an integration with Merch Bar, 
So if you have products listed on Merch Bar, they'll be showcased on the Merch Shelf just below your top tracks. Spotify also has their own pitching tools that give artists the opportunity to pitch new releases directly to the editorial teams at Spotify for a chance of landing playlists. This form is found within Spotify for Artists, of course, when you have a new release coming up. The earlier you pitch, the better, and you can only pitch one song per artist at a time. So if you have multiple tracks being released, you need to choose which one you want to put in front of editors. As a bonus, Spotify will also add the track to your followers' release radar if they receive the pitch at least two weeks before the release comes out. Canvas is another really compelling tool on Spotify, which was launched back in 2019. It's basically a short, looping video that accompanies any track as an engaging alternative to album artwork. Let's look at some examples. As you can see here, there's many ways you can approach a canvas. There's a 3D uh, graphic from La Dispute, a 2D graphic from Kurungbin, a mixed media from J to G, as well as a video from Tourist. In addition to creating these kinds of videos, you can also encourage fan behavior, such as buying a physical pre-release, in return for a chance to be featured on your canvas. Or you can create a virtual treasure hunt centered around your Spotify canvases. Lots of ways to use this for greater fan engagement. And don't just take our word for it, canvases work. So according to Spotify, canvases make it 145% more likely that a user will share your track, 5% more likely that they'll keep on streaming, 20% more likely that they're going to add the song to a personal playlist, and 9% more likely that they'll visit an artist's profile. So all in all, having a canvas on all of your tracks is really useful and helps increase the success of your music. You can find out more at canvas.spotify.com. Last but not least, Spotify does have a analytics suite. They let you see how listeners, streams, and followers have grown over time. There are some basic demographic stats such as gender and age splits as well as geographical data. Some of the metrics don't let you change the time frame, which can be a bit limiting, but you can see stats on a song-by-song -song basis including where your streams are coming from geographically and within the platform. For example, what proportion of your streams are coming from playlists? They also let you see how many canvas views a song has had and how many saves it's had. A really useful part of Spotify analytics is that of the ability to see how streams have changed over time in different territories. This can help you determine the success of your marketing efforts in a specific Spotify territory. So some key takeaways around Spotify for artists. Spotify has lots of branding and customization available so make the best use of it. This is your chance to communicate within the Spotify ecosystem uh, more of an artist brand outside of just the music on the platform. Remember, there are other opportunities to make money in Spotify, such as merch and tickets, and making sure you use those functions to give your streaming fans a chance to buy and support. The numbers on Canvas, well, they pretty much speak for themselves, and we've covered a fair few interesting examples of artist teams using Canvas to tell a better story. So whatever additional marketing features are available to you, use them. The more you use the features, the better you're going to do on the platform. And finally, make sure to not ignore those analytics, but also don't get caught in overanalyzing. Data like this can be a real game changer to better understand music consumption and help you better gauge and plan releases and marketing activities. That's it for Spotify for Artists. Let's move on over to Apple Music for Artists. Now, Here's our quick fire run through. Uh, to get access to Apple Music for Artists, you need to log in with an Apple ID, either via an existing account or creating a new one. You input an iTunes store page link, yes, that's right, iTunes, uh, to be able to connect your profile to the correct artist profile. The key features of this platform are highly granular analytics, very granular indeed, and the ability to change the artist image across Apple Music, but also iTunes, Shazam, as well as the milestone activities available, which we'll take a look at. The analytics give you a breadth of knowledge and it allows you to view very granular stats. You can also see Shazam stats, radio spins, iTunes purchases, as well as video views. The strength of this platform is definitely the analytics, however. It overperforms all other artist platforms in this category. And bear in mind, Apple Music for Artists is available on desktop and mobile, but of course, it's only available on iOS when it comes to mobile. So 
not a lot of customization compared to that of Spotify when it comes to Apple Music. You can change the artist image, as you see here, and that really is about it. This setting changes the image, though, across both Apple Music and iTunes, as well as on Shazam. Something to bear in mind. But what they lack in profile customizability, they make up in analytics. That's right, it's a very impressive analytical suite that has some very granular settings. Now, the analytics don't just cover the streaming service, but also iTunes purchases as well as Shazam. So let's take a look at the analytics settings. There's a lot of different selections and filters you can use when looking at the performance trends on Apple Music for artists. First, you can decide which activity you want to look at, if that's plays, listeners, shazams, radio spins, song purchases, album purchases, or even video views. You can then also choose what kind of product or entity you want to analyze. There are song, album, playlist, gender, age, continent, country or region, city or video, any of these. And they will also be able to tell you what kind of activity you choose first. So you can also choose if you want to filter out certain products. For example, if you're looking at plays by song, you can choose whether to analyze all songs, a few specific songs, or just one. On top of these settings, you also have the ability to apply filters. Again, these will depend on the activity or product you're analyzing. But first of all, you have to choose the time frame. The time frame is very customizable, much more customizable than other platforms. You can go back a specific number of weeks, months, or years, or even view trends over their entire lifetime. You can also define where in the world you want to view the trends, from continents to countries and even down to specific cities. This helps you understand local trends. For example, you can see if a particular song is connecting in a city where you've been running song-specific ads. There's also basic settings such as gender and age, but of course you can use those to analyze performance as well. But let's take a look at more of this geographic settings. It's a really, really handy way of seeing where your music is being played, listened to, or even shazammed. You can zoom in on any of these cities, and as I've mentioned before, go to a very granular level to actually understand what activity is coming out of a top key territory. Apple Music for Artists also gives you smart, summarized milestones of your performance across the ecosystem. Here are some examples of the highlights that they feature. You get things like all-time play counts, first week shazam performance, all-time shazams, playlist ads, and many, many more. You get the idea. These little milestones give you a very good idea of what's actually happening on your Apple Music for Artist profile. Next up, we're going to look at the toolbox for Apple Music, which you can find on tools.applemusic.com. By inputting an artist, a song, or an album, you can create content links, embed codes, QR codes, and even tweets with music previews. If you have an affiliate code, you can add this as well so that anyone that comes to your link and signs up to Apple Music, you're able to generate affiliate income. So what are the key takeaways? Well, within Apple, here are the key takeaways we've thought of. Use the analytical features to better understand where your audience is and the impact of your marketing around release. Use Shazam and Apple Music radio data to help you identify new audiences. The main limitations for Apple Music for Artists are the lack of wider profile customization and no integrated pitching tool. However, they well make up for that with the amount of analytics available to you. Well, that was a very quick run through of two of the key international streaming platforms and their four artist tools. Hopefully you found this useful and enjoyed the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Bye bye.